Welcome back to History Extra. Today we're going to be talking about something controversial. Is the United States considered an empire? But first, what is an empire? Well, to start off, the dictionary defines an empire as a major political unit having a territory of great extent or a number of territories or peoples under a single sovereign authority. But when I think of an empire, I would say that it's like when a country expands into other territories and those territories don't really want to be taken over. And so it's kind of like taking over that place without permission. And like an example would be like with like Cuba and Hawaii and like America kind of like restricted their rights. So I would consider America to be an empire just like using like my definition at least because like they kind of force those areas to be under their control. Um, I agree with Nayara because I believe that an empire is when a country takes control of other countries. And this control can be taken by both um, violent or pacific means. And very often the conquered countries have to follow rules that are dictated by the conqueror about many life aspects such as like politics, economy, and society. And I believe the United States is an empire, for example, because of the Platt Amendment which is an amendment that gave the U.S. the right to put restrictions on Cuba and prevent it from like having business affairs with other countries, and also gave the U.S. the right to have a say in Cuba's issues, even if though the country didn't want that. Well, when I think of the word empire, I remind me of the Ottoman Roman empires and the other empires you learned in the past, and they seem to like control their people very unfairly, kind of, like in just taking over and completely isolating them, but the United States gives more freedom to the people and creates more of a democracy. And so at the end, I really believe that they're just trying to help out with the independence and forming other nations, like helping form governments and rebuild nations rather than just taking over. And for the actions that we take is like, say it's saw Hawaii as a profitable sugar plant, like profitable sh sugar plantations. And at first people weren't having like the ideals of expanding all the way to Hawaii because they just got out of the Civil War and they wanted to rebuild the South and expand the United States West on the mainland. But then people were considered because they liked the idea of world power. And so, yeah. I also see that, like, most countries didn't, like, want U.S. intervention. So they were forced to industrialize so that the U.S. wouldn't intervene. But there are also examples of, like, countries that asked for U.S. intervention. For example, Venezuela when Europe created the block blockade against Venezuela to devastate their economy, they asked specifically for the United States help, since the United States is kind of like the protector of the Western Hemisphere. And also like with Panama and the Panama Canal, where U.S. kind of like helped the rebels uh, fight against Colombia, I do view that as kind of like, a, like America crossing a certain line, but because they were trying to fulfill their own agenda. But, I mean, they were able to get access to the Panel Canal, so, yeah. And then, also with, like, Cuba, where Cuba was a Spanish territory, they kind of felt sympathetic, so they stepped into this, like, conflict that didn't really involve them, but they tried to help Cuba fight against Spain. And so, like, the U.S., does tend to intervene. I feel like that does affect a lot of the world and like people kind of might be that as annoying a little bit but there are countries that like they're trying to help so I don't know. It's kind of like unwanted but some of it is wanted. Um, I believe most countries that have been conquered by the U.S. Um, didn't want to be um, subjugated and for this reason they saw that as a negative action to take and that's because um, many of those countries uh, had different beliefs, ideals, and habits than the U.S. Also because um, most of them were not as much developed as the U.S. and so they were probably afraid of the um, country changing their conditions and impacting on their stability. And for example, the U.S., I believe that the U.S. took actions under Wilson as a president, also like in Mexico, and like it all began in 1911, which is the date of the start of the Mexican Revolution. And the reasons uh, for it are to be defined in a strong, like, anti-American sentiment that Mexico felt against the U.S. because of, like, past events in history. And what Wilson did is sending, basically sending troops to deal in a peaceful um, way with Mexico. But in the end, the Mexico involvement had to end because of the um, start of World War One, And this was, like, a failure to Wilson and then also to the U.S.,
And in like what ways uh, did U.S. presence such as McKinley and Roosevelt, Taft, and Wilson protect or expand America's role during their time in the office? I would say um, McKinley is the president who involved himself the most with foreign affairs just because he was involved in the Spanish-American War when he led the nation to victory by taking control of the Hawaii and by promoting economy and he also made it possible for the U.S. to conquer Manila which is the capital of the Philippines and he also expanded the power of the U.S. to Europe too and he was able to control it and since Europe controlled China he could spread over that part of Asia too and so he kind of like expanded the U.S. all over the world. Well, I think President Roosevelt is the president who involved himself more in foreign affairs just because he physically also put himself in the fighting itself, such as like in the Spanish-American War and in the Philippine War. And so like this just shows his patriotic side and how he actually just involved himself more. Then he also created peace between two countries um, and ended the Russo-Japanese War. Um, and he created the Portsmouth Treaty, which just created peace with two, co- two countries, which just shows how his effect, like how he involved himself in foreign affairs, ended up being like positive, just because it ended up creating peace between two. And he also added the Roosevelt Corollary on the Monroe Doctrine. To, uh, to like reinforce um, the idea of a country in the Western Hemisphere exhibits a continuous like wrongdoing, then the U.S. is able to intervene, and this like corollary w- was just created because the success of the Platten Amendment. So it just just shows how it just increased getting better and how he involved himself more. And then with President Wilson and President Taft was a bit different just because like with Wilson, he at first he opposed imperialism, but he wanted America to be this kind of this example of democracy and so he did end up using like military like force to spread democracy to other countries, especially like uh countries in like the Caribbean. So in that kind of sense, he did employ Roosevelt's um, policy a bit for those um, by focusing in the Caribbean. And then with Taft, he was much more like diplomatic. So like, for example, he employed the dollar diplomacy, which he used um, to strengthen Latin American countries and like bring them out of poverty and disorder because he felt that if Latin American countries prospered and so would the United States and like so would the economy in the United States and so he would intervene a lot in like Latin American countries and uh, when they had conflicts with Europe and um, that just kind of showed that like he was a protector of the Western Hemisphere even though like he wasn't supposed to get involved in European affairs so. Um, so now that we heard about like each president what were the philosophies on foreign policy and what would like the factors that shape their philosophy and how did they enforce it so uh well i think mckinley started an important foreign policy in 1898 by defeating spain and this um allowed cuba to gain independence and also allowed the u.s to gain more control over the country uh, after the help they gave it and also the political image they had obtained and this po- policy by mckinley allowed the u.s to get more power in the world and start like being leaders and I think he enforced his philosophy by becoming a beloved and respected president, and he showed that he cared about people's opinion. He brought the country to war alongside yellow journalism uh, that was created under his presidency, and which was a way to like put people even more into the nation's problems using drama and to make things seem more important than they actually were. And this was to make public opinion arise around everything that happened. Um, Roosevelt's philosophy on foreign policy was that the United States should be acted or like act like a world's police really because he believed in the idea of military and the navy a lot which just ex- shaped his belief and like you can see that in, through the Spanish-American War, the Philippine War and how he watched like he used the idea of like the military to help Panama get its independence so it just shows how he did that. Um, and he enforced it by just like, again, like involving himself more and creating peace and treaties with other countries using the idea of military. So, yeah. And with Wilson, like I said earlier, he did, um, oppose imperialism, but he did want countries to 
view the United States as this moral democracy. And so he used Teddy Roosevelt's policy in the Caribbean to install democracy. And he enforced that by using like military actions and stuff like that just to get those areas to become like democratic. Um, and with Taft, um, also, like I said earlier, he was much more diplomatic and he didn't really rely on the use of military, but he, so what he did is he just wanted to strengthen Latin American, like, relations and he wanted to strengthen U.S. influence over those areas, over Latin American areas, and so he focused a lot on building up, like, their economies and, like, their infrastructure because if they benefited, then if they were doing better than we would do better and so like like i said he didn't use military actions um he just more focused on building relationships um what were the results of their actions like what would you say these presidents the results were um i think mckinley was loved even by those who did not share his beliefs um, he's not the most famous president today, and most uh, most of what he did is not remembered. But I think it's important to like recognize his presidency as the first modern one since it brought um, political power, protection of economy to the U.S., and those things allowed the main industries to start. And but one bad thing that he did is that he kind of like underestimated other countries' actions a lot of times, and that's why he faced a lot of criticism. Um, well, at the end, I think President Roosevelt was the president who was very patriotic, but at the same time would help out other countries while still fighting for America itself by just, like, creating peace with everyone and also in self, like, fighting for America and, like, just being just very patriotic at the end really helped and ended up being the main result of his actions. And with Wilson, I definitely feel like he was able to spread democracy to a lot of other countries in like specifically in the western hemisphere and so he kind of showed that like other areas that democracy is what like people should um try to get to and like that's kind of like the perfect form of like the government just because he was trying to spread it so much during his presidency and with Taft, he definitely did make a lot of connections with Latin American countries during his time and kind of established, well, further established the United States as a protector of, like, those Latin American countries in the Western Hemisphere. So, um, and, like, with what we've talked about, what are some, like, connections that you could make from those presidents in, those, in that time period to now? Well, today, I think the United States is interfering a lot with, like, for example, North Korea and Russia and creating alliances with them. But at the same time, I feel like just creating an alliance with people that we've just kind of created a fear upon just because of, like, the news and everything. It just started getting just built up. And I think it's building up a lot of fear for the citizens of the United States. So I think today we're, like trying to create peace but at the same time it's creating fear for a lot of citizens so i think right now foreign policy is kind of just should be less enforced at, of today and so yeah um what i can say from a foreigner point of view is that um i think that trump is trying to expand the u.s even more and what basically uh, characterizes um the u.s today and these presidencies like an absence of an overall vision of what is going on in the world today, like what the situation is like, and that gives kind of like irrationality to his ideas and it gives, and also gives a way to his personal objectives that are just dictated by his personal mood. Like he doesn't care about like what the, what people in the US want, but he just cares about what he wants. Yeah, and I would also definitely say that like in the era of like Trump being president, um, we've definitely seen a lot a lot of things be very different from when these presidents were in office. Like, for example, connections with, like, North Korea and Russia are being, like, created, whereas in the past we've kind of, like, steered clear from them. And, like, yeah. Russia was one of the reasons why we didn't enter into World War One and stuff like that. And um, I would also say that now we definitely see, like... Um, the United States trying to enforce democracy in other areas, like, for example, in the Middle East, mm -hmm. which is very different from where we live. They definitely do try to, like, kind of shape um, what people over there think by, like, kind of entering into conflicts that they have over there. Mm -hmm. um, and with, like, um, I do feel like we have steered 
um, away from, like, uh, Taft's presidency just because, like, he wanted to build relations with Latin American countries, but now it's kind of, like, those relationships don't really exist that much just because, like, with Trump, he's kind of, like, created a barrier between the United States and other Latin American countries, and, like, we can see that with... Um, the migrant caravan where like people are just trying to escape from the situations they're living in the United States and they're really helping with that so the Monroe Doctrine is kind of neglected in these days yeah and so like I mean everything we've said kind of ties back into um, today and like I want to thank you guys for just saying things and like I think that's a wrap for today alrighty (laughs) alright Bye, guys. See you next time.